joining us uh, to talk about um, uh, Elliot Spitzer. Um, would you believe that his uh, prostitution scandal when he was governor of New York State, which forced him to resign, uh, was the inspiration behind a novel, a novel called, of all things, Virtue? Um, we're joined now by the author of that uh, novel, uh, Allison Bassin. Hello, Allison. How are you? Hi, Steve. I'm great. How are you? Good. And you live in New York, right? Out on Long Island, I believe? I do. Okay. So you're well uh, acquainted with uh, with the uh, antics of uh, of the uh, steamroller himself, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Spitzer, who's now running for a controller of, uh, of New York City. So tell me, what, tell me how this all happened. Uh, he gets up uh, you know, and, and is accused. He admits to using a prostitute, and we find out that he was uh, client number nine, and, and he, took a, you know, he went across state lines with, for the prostitute, and he laundered the money, apparently, and got off scot-free, just had to resign, no jail time. And you sit there and say, hey, I'm going to write me a novel. <laughs> I know, it sounds funny, but um, I think I was just so flabbergasted, Steve, why a, a powerful man would risk his career, his reputation, his family relationships, and then I started thinking a little bit more about it and wondered why a woman would choose the world's oldest profession, and it gave birth to a novel. Well, that, uh, so tell us about the novel. I mean, it's, it's fictional, right? So there's no Elliot Spitzer in there or anything, it's, uh, but there's, no. is there an Elliot Spitzer character or a like character? Um, one of the clients is a politician. Uh, she nicknames him. She nicknames every client and explains which hat she wears. This particular client is nicknamed the Lone Ranger because he comes in with a disguise. And you mean you mean? And in real life, of course, we we hear he came in wearing uh, black socks. He also would wear <laughs> baseball caps. I think Jets caps or something like that, if I can recall correctly. That's true. Well, yeah. we we know that um, he didn't have a foot fetish. He kept his socks on. <laughs> he may have had a he may have had a reason for that. If you go back to Seinfeld, it was uh, George's father who, uh, uh, during the Korean War, fell in love with a Korean girl who he met uh, in a nail shop uh, years later, and and talked about how he would never take his shoes off because he felt he had. Uh, foot odor so <laughs> so he might have had a foot fetish but not not of his own feet certainly of course not yes. i mean who knows who knows why he kept his socks on i think he was in a hurry that that could be too yeah. that could be too all right so so this uh, i mean has this uh has this um revelation by spitzer that he's going to seek this uh, uh this office in new york city as it um uh, reinvigorated you to maybe uh, add a, a second novel has it sparked a renewed interest in in the in the first novel called virtue well, actually, Virtue just came out. Even though I was inspired back when it happened, I did a lot of research uh, all about prostitution, and the book was only published uh, about a month ago, so it just happens to be, you know, fortuitous that this is all happening with, with Elliot Spitzer. And, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm shocked he's, you know, coming, re-entering the political arena. I think this says a lot about, you know, the type of person he is. Um, why he probably sought out, you know, a uh, escort to begin with. I mean, this man literally thought he was above the law. He, he thought he was untouchable and, you know, very entitled. And that's, you know, part of, um, unfortunately, there's a lot of powerful men who feel this entitlement. But I actually think, you know, the way he would go into the room and, uh, you know, wanted to have, you know, instant sex, he was ready to go, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, uh, says a lot about, why he saw escorts. I mean, this was not a man fulfilling fantasies. This was, I want sex, I want it now, and I don't want to talk to you. I don't want an emotional, you know, contact. And I almost wonder if, if this was a stress reliever for him. Well, I don't know. I mean, you, you would have to think there are easier ways to do it than take the train to Washington, D.C. and make a, you know, cockamamie payment arrangements as, as governor of New York State. Uh, but nonetheless, that, that's what he chose to do. Uh, the fact that he, you know, did not serve jail time, uh, yeah. the fact that he did not, uh, was not penalized. I mean, I don't even think he lost his law license, did he? Um, it's, it's kind of, uh, it kind of sends the wrong message uh, because not only did this man break the law, uh, but he helped uh, enforce the laws and put people in jail who did exactly what he did. He kind of criminalized being a John, if you will, as state attorney general before he became governor. Absolutely. Uh, and then he goes and becomes a John and nothing happens to him. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's called being a hypocrite. Uh, to stand on your soapbox and target prostitution rings while you're seeing them, I mean, that's, that's jaw-dropping. This is why I was so flabbergasted with, with this story. I mean, here we have the sheriff of Wall Street. The guy's got a million enemies. Who, you would think, 
it needs to keep their nose clean, the cleanest. Because I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, somehow he got caught. I mean, he was trying to do a wire transfer. You're telling me this guy doesn't know how to, the logistics of doing a money wire transfer and he's running for comptroller? I mean, I find that fascinating, too. That is fascinating. Yeah. And, 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 you know, uh, the, the thing is, and we're talking to uh, author Allison uh, Basson, uh, whose uh, book Virtue is uh, just out a month ago and uh, coincides now with the uh, with the uh, the real life Elliot Spitzer, her book, a fictional novel based on Elliot Spitzer's uh, uh, prostitution revelations when he was governor of New York. Um, I, I, you know, I, he goes around now saying, and to me, him and Weiner are the same type of person. And and I, for, I forget the fact, just coincidental, that they both have their uh, sexual problems here. Um, but but to me, they're the same kind of, in my opinion, vicious, vindictive. Um, I'm never wrong. How dare you question me? I'll get you type people. Uh, and now they're both forced to go around saying, as Spitzer said just the other day, uh, oh, I have thin, skick as, uh, thin I'm sorry, I have skin thick as a rhinoceros. Uh, people are entitled to say what they say. You know, they boo you at ball games. This is New York. They hate it. It's killing them. They want to punch the people that are saying this. They want to destroy the people that are saying it, but they got to smile and ignore it and say, hey, that's your opinion. I love you for it. It's got to be eating them up. It's got to, but when you're an egomaniac, you know, you, that's why he's coming out in the 11th hour trying to get all these signatures. The fact that, you know, he goes on the Craigslist and charges, you know, not charges, but he says he's going to pay people to get out there and get signatures, $800 800 a bucks day. an hour, yeah, pretty I'm wild. I'm going to call him up and say, I'll do it if you pay me $1,000 an hour. <laughs> well, if you do that, let us know uh, what he says, please. He's uh, used to paying that. <laughs> well, there you go, but um bum uh, <laughs> Very what good. What about when he said in the New York Times, they quoted him, I'm going to be standing on every street corner? I know that's bizarre. Well, so, you know, you can't, you can't <laughs> help yourself with Wiener. Uh, there's hardly any, see, hardly anything you could say that isn't a double entendre. Uh, with uh, Spitzer, he has a little more flexibility, uh, although that might be one too. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, he, he, that was a dumb thing to say. You're absolutely right. Hey, listen, uh, nice talking to you, Allison. Good luck with the book. Thank you so much. All right, take Glad care. Part the, of your show, Steve. Thank you. My pleasure. The book is uh, Virtue, a fictional 